Chicago is known as the candy capital of the world, really because of its location. It's situated right, almost right directly in the middle of the United States. And that was very important for ingredients to come in through the rail systems that had been developed. Ingredients were able to come in to Chicago, but also, more importantly, finished goods or candy were able to get out through this transportation. Um, you also have a network of not only the rail system, but rivers um, where you know, candy could be shipped easily. It's a, the climate is conducive here for making candy. Um, while the summers got very, get very hot, um, you know, you have these long stretches of time where it's, it's perfect temperature for, for making candy. Um, most candy companies in Chicago used to and still do shut down for a long period of time in the, in the summer. The access to ingredients is one part, but the fact that a lot of ingredients are here naturally. There's a lot of, there's a lot of farmland here, um, a lot of dairy, access to dairy, um, which is important obviously in, uh, in making candy. Mm -hmm. Fresh what ingredients. About sugar? Well, sugar beets are also grown here, so a lot of, most of the uh, sugar now in the U.S. comes from the sugar beet as, as opposed to sugar cane. Um, sugar beets are, are also grown here. Um, more sugar beets are grown elsewhere, but, but sure, sugar is sugar's readily available here. Um, uh, which role uh, that um, industry played in the economy of Chicago? Well, the trade organization for the candy industry, the National Confectioners Organization, was started here in Chicago. There was such a booming um, confectionery industry in the late 1800s that this trade organization to support the industry was started here in the 1880s and that became very helpful for these this burgeoning industry to have the support of a trade organization that that helped them um, with all sorts of uh, you know issues like adulteration of candy and st setting standards for candy and that was really important that that, that organization was here. That organization has since moved to Washington uh, DC um, but the, it still plays that industry, that uh, organization still plays a major role in the industry. Um, that uh, name of uh, Chicago Candy Capital ah. is still uh, um, not real, uh, it's still uh. The the term uh, the, uh, the that's the the notion that Chicago is the candy capital of the world um, was something that people started talking about in the late 1800s. Chicago hosted um, a World's Fair called the Columbian Exposition, um, and a lot of big candy companies showed up, Chicago area candy companies, but also international candy companies. And a lot of folks got the idea to manufacture candy from this fair. In fact, Milton Hershey um, saw chocolate making, he was in the caramel business, and he saw chocolate making equipment at this fair in Chicago, the Columbian Exposition, and got the notion to manufacture chocolate. He had all the machinery shipped from Chicago to Pennsylvania um, to open up this, this chocolate factory. Uh, so from a very, you know, from the late 1800s, Chicago was known as a candy capital, but still today, even still today, it is known as a culinary and confectionery capital. A lot of big companies are still located here. So you have companies like um, Tootsie Roll and M&M Mars has a beautiful, looks like a Spanish hacienda factory um, to, to the west of us. And then you have a company called Jelly Belly, which started out as Golitz um, back in the late 1800s. You know, they're in, in North Chicago and also have a plant in Wisconsin. So you still have a lot of big candy companies that are operating out of Chicago. But you also have a lot of innovative newer companies that are starting up. So you have a lot of uh, companies that are putting kind of a, their, their new twist on, you know, old favorites. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, well-regarded culinary schools here in Chicago, and I think there's a trend now, you know, people have, in the United States have explored baking, you know, cupcakes and all these trends in food, but I think the next wave is really going to be, you know, exploring candy and uh, artisanal candy. Yeah. And that's happening here in Chicago.
Um, what about I? Um, I've seen a recent research uh, on um, nutrition research uh, mm. about the the fact that candies and chocolate lovers are uh, less um, uh, have a mass body index uh, lower and uh, mm, yeah less. Uh, yeah, they're they're well. We can, um, the candy. Uh, industry supports a lot of research. Um, the, uh, the folks that manufacture uh, cocoa, right, and chocolate, uh, they recently have supported a lot of research into the health benefits of chocolate. And yeah, what? What about sugar? And what they're and what they're realizing is that they're supporting, you know, research that has been known for a long time. You know, when the Spanish uh, discovered chocolate. It was, you know, it was used for, you know, before ceremonies and before, you know, going out to battle. So people always knew that it had this, this, the the body had a chemical reaction to chocolate, and that it was, yeah. you know, gave people a, a high, um, and that's from a, a little bit of caffeine, but something called theobromine. In sugar, now they're realizing that people who eat, you know, more more candy aren't necessarily people who, you know, are are overweight. Um, but there's, you know, there's some different thoughts about that. My thought is everything in moderation, right? Um, Americans haven't been so good about that, but but I think that we can we can say that everything in moderation is a is a is a good way to be. I'm sure that phrase comes from Italians. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've seen also your um, in your website the the page about uh, 1928 about the um, the new advertisement yeah. uh, candy is yeah. food. Yeah. Can you tell more about? That? Well, I, I'm I'm fascinated with the history of candy and how how it it was marketed and in the 1920s. Um, there was this candy bar craze, and candy bars were really marketed as as meal replacements, as a as a healthful alternative to a meal. But remember, we were also going into the Great Depression here in the United States, and so uh, what you had was a meal replacement. You know, five cents would buy you protein and sugar, and that would you know, for a lot of people that was you know what they could afford and a, and a way to kind of stay stay alive. Um, and you had a lot of candy bars that were called um, chicken dinner or Denver sandwich and they were sort of given these names that sounded like a, a robust meal. Um, and you have that coming back again. I don't know if you have this uh, trend in Italy, but here in the United States, you certainly have a lot of um, sort of health bars that are marketed to athletes and people who you know want quick energy. But these, to me, are just kind of another take on a on a candy bar. Um, oftentimes, you know, they're sort of a glorified uh, granola bar, but you know, they have they have sugar in them, and they have a lot of these you know nuts. They have a lot of these things that candy bars do too, and they're just kind of packaged differently. So I think there's, you know, what comes around goes around. They say so. I think now we're they're sort of we're still marketing candy under the guise of of it being healthy. And I think it, I think in some ways it, it can be again in moderation. And I think a little bit of a, a little bit of sugar goes a long way for for a lot of people. It's you know when you consume sugar in everything you're eating that that it's a problem. But for you know, I know a lot of athletes who look at the, you know, candy bars and they say, okay, I'll take one with, you know, peanuts and a little bit of protein and that'll get me by. Um, what do you think is the main problem for the um, sweet industry, for the candy industry to, yeah, to... Well, some of the issues that candy and the candy are, are twofold here in the United States, you know, they they call candy recession proof, right? Because candy sales go up as as recessions happen and depressions happen. Because again, they are this quick and easy way to get you know nutrition, while um, you know people don't have a lot of money. And so the other part of that is that it's easy to indulge you know um, in a candy bar during a recession and not so easy to take a vacation. So it is a way for people to kind of take a little, you know, vacation or take a, have a little indulgence if things are, if things are economically difficult. While the candy industry, while candy sales usually increase during recessions, the commodity uh, prices of, of things to make candy are increasing right now. And that's, that's one of the biggest issues that a lot of these 
um, candy companies face. There's been a lot of uh, political turmoil in West Africa, which affects cocoa beans. Uh, the sh prices of sugar are at an all-time high. You know, so all these uh, da any dairy products are very expensive. So all these things are very, um, so, you know, they all, food everywhere, food all around the world. The prices of food is is going up, and that that affects the the candy industry. And I think also a lot a lot of candy companies are responding to people's. Um, Americans desire to eat a little bit healthier, so they're using healthier ingredients. Um, a lot of them are kind of shifting the sugars that they're using because the high fructose corn syrup has a has, has a bad rap here in, in the U.S. Um, and so, you know, they're 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 t sort of tweaking the recipes. Um, I think they're tweaking the recipes because of the high cost of commodities, but also because of this, you know, people want something a little bit more healthful. So those are some of the bigger issues that they're facing. So the um, so some of the things that are happening today in the marketplace in candy, um, which I'll explore further at this big candy show that happens here in Chicago, where you know hundreds of uh, candy companies, both small and large, set up booths and to show their to show their candy. But one of some of the trends that you'll see in candy are. Um, using natural ingredients and kind of marketing your candy for specific purposes. So there's a there's a company that's been quite successful in marketing, you know, what used to be called granola bars or health bars, um, this this cliff bar company. And now they're marketing they have a certain division that markets for uh, candy these candy types of candy bars. Um, for athletes and for pregnant women, there's a you know there's a candy bar for specifically for pregnant women. There's even a candy bar for you know women who are PMSing. You know there's all these there's all these um, there's all these different candy bars for these um, which is which is new. It used to be one size fits all, but I think as people want things that are sort of custom tailored for them, this becomes a bigger trend. So you'll see you know candy that has. Um, uh, health benefits like it'll help you sleep or it'll give you you know extra vitamins you know this is this they call this um, you know nutraceuticals in candy so antioxidants you know that's a big one you see in, in candy right now or uh, m you know more of the benefits from cacao, from cacao so you see on a lot of uh, chocolate bars now they're um, talking about the origins of where the chocolate comes from but also the percentage of the cacao and that's very new in the United States and people are understanding that now oh okay if it has more cacao in it it's better for me you know they're making they're making these connections and, and tasting um, chocolate is m becoming a lot like what happened with coffee in this country um, you know 20 years ago uh, artisanal coffee, people sort of understanding coffee, it's not all about this coffee in a tin, you know, it's it's whole bean and how it's roasted and where the beans come from. And that's the same thing with chocolate and people are understanding that chocolate, you know, has a, has a, can be grown in specialty areas and it has different characteristics and when those get blended then you get a, you can have a, you know, a wonderful sort of trip with, with, with chocolate. So chocolate's sort of undergoing what coffee and wine have, have gone through in this country. So do you think that shifting from an industrial production to a more uh, artisanal uh, production can be a good shift? Well, well, let's see, about five years ago you saw big companies starting to buy more artisanal companies. You know, they, they sort of were gobbling up these smaller companies. Because they had, they were the ones that were had the presence in the Whole Foods and some of the bigger kind of you know health food markets here in the United States, and it was much easier to buy these artisanal companies. And I think um, I think these artisanal companies um, sort of understand if they want to play with. With the big guys, they need things like distribution to get their product out to stores, and they need, you know, they need a store, a, a good story that the consumers are going to connect with. But they have an, a, an interesting advantage in this in this day and age with social networking. You know, it's much easier for a company to kind of get out there and get known um, through the internet than it than it ever has. And so, a lot of these companies that sort of face that 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 sort of hurdle about getting their, getting their product out there. 
don't have to worry about that, but they'll still always have to worry about kind of these bigger issues, which is, you know, really getting distribution. Um, but it's not stop. It, the fascinating thing is it's not stopping a lot of these people who are truly passionate about about candy and and really what they're eating and foodies that are exploring this niche that I think is so much part of American culture. Perfect. This 